Glory be to God. Welcome to D Weaver Art here on YouTube. I give glory and praise to God that you choose to watch this channel. Today I'd like to share with you episode three in a series I title Artist Talk. In Artist Talk, I interview various artists who have influenced me and inspired me as an artist. In today's episode, I will be interviewing artist James E. Murphy Jr. of Baltimore, Maryland. Now, if you're new to the D. Weaver Art Channel, I urge you to subscribe. And also, don't forget to hit the notification bell, in which you will receive instant alerts on new content and material. With that being said, please watch and enjoy this video. Glory be to God. Welcome to D. Weaver Art here on YouTube. Today I have in episode three, I had to think there, um, this I will be sharing and we will be sharing together um, with the artist better known as James E. Murphy Jr. of Baltimore, Maryland. And he's going to be sharing with us his life as an artist and his works of art and welcome to D Weaver Art, James. I hope you are doing well. I am D and thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for having me, man. And hope we, you are doing as well. Yes, James, I am delighted and doing really well by the grace of God. I am so happy and delighted and grace and I'm looking forward to us sharing about you as an artist and your artwork to my audience. Now, um, you have quite a, a lot of, um, how would I say, a lot to say. You're pretty loaded because not only I want I want people to just, we're going to get straight to the point on these questions. Now, mm -hmm. you, from what I want the audience to know right now, I'm going to say it real quick, that James and I are good art friends. We've we, we, we haven't met one another in person, but we, we really communicate uh, qu uh, quite a bit. And James is an uh, 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 artist of faith. This brother has a conviction about his artwork and is connected to um, his convictions as a believer in Christ. And that's what I love about you, uh, James, too. Now, your artwork, based on what I have perceived from it and what I've seen through the years, is, is really, um, how would I say, Afrocentric. And your artwork, you do, with a, you do a lot of, uh, uh, how would I say, almost figurative and portrait type portraiture artwork. And a lot of it's done with graphite pencil. But before we go any further, please, real briefly, because we've got a lot to share and try to pack in this little short amount of time. Okay. Please share with the audience um, your really bad situation where you was in the hospital for, and it was really serious. So tell us what God did for you in, in that situation. Um, I've been in the hospital, I guess, uh, twice in two serious situations, but I'll take you back to uh, the main one. It was in 2016, I was diagnosed with a pituitary tumor. And I tell you how God works in that. Um, I came down with vertigo, ne never had any issues. And uh, uh, rooms were spinning. My wife had to rush me to the emergency room and uh, they kind of got it under control, but they were asking me, you know, uh, had I been, been sick, had I had a cold, had I had a flu? So all the, the answer was no. Uh, my primary physician sent me to uh, his nose throat doctor to, uh, try to assess what started you know, my vertigo. So in the process of having several tests, one of which was an MRI, the MRI revealed that I had an inner ear infection that caused the vertigo, but, but get this, uh, the MRI also revealed that I had a mass and my wife and I were talking to Dr. Mass, you know, what, what? and uh, so they, the, the in the throat doctor had to let, let me know that we, we had to see a, a neurologist, a, a neurosurgeon. And uh, so we met with a neurosurgeon and they said that I had a pituitary mass right behind my nasal cavity. Uh, and they said that more than likely it was benign and that um, it was the size of a quarter. Don't know how long it had been growing. And mm -hmm. if 
if I didn't have the vertigo, I wouldn't have had the tests the, with the MRI to reveal that I had a pituitary mass. And they said that uh, the pituitary mass, if it continued to grow, would have damaged my eyesight. Mm. So, you know, thank the Lord for the, the vertigo was, believe me, was not pleasant at all. And I still have remnants of that to this day, but I'm, I'm not complaining because it was a blessing in disguise to uh, to have the vertigo, which had me have the test, which revealed the pituitary mass, which could have, uh, you know, turned into something really, really uh, severe. And uh, so I had to have surgery to have the pituitary mass uh, removed. Um, and thank God it was benign, but I, I was uh, out of, uh, in addition to my artwork, I also work at, have a day job as well. And I was out of my day job for almost uh, seven to eight months because I had to have, I had to heal enough from the vertigo in order to have the surgery to remove the pituitary mass. So once I had the surgery to have the pituitary mass removed, I had to heal from that. That was about three months of healing. Then from that, I had to go back to physical therapy to help with the vertigo. Um, but again, you know, I give you know, God honor and thanks in that because it's, it's, this isn't a complaint. This is a praise and a testimony because if it wasn't for the vertigo, then my eyesight could have been damaged and my issue could have been really more severe. Wow. We, yes, brother, I totally agree. We give glory and praise to God because, I mean, he definitely intervened in your situation. I, I, it's amazing. We don't know how we're going to respond in situations of crisis such as you, yours being like a health or something issue, but I mean, anything in the future, God forbid, but if we do have to face something like that, he will give us grace as children of God. He will give us grace mm -hmm. to uh, be able to respond in such a way and to be able to uh, endure for the period of time and just even overcome eventually. So I, I just want to thank you for just sharing that because somebody watching this uh, uh, broadcast, uh, this interview, this episode um, three, uh, Artist Talk, uh, someone needed to hear that. And if you're going through something right now, you watching this video and it's life threatening or it's really affecting your life, just know and believe that God is no respecter of persons. If he did it for someone else, he can do it for you. And don't lose hope on that. OK, amen. Um, amen. Well, praise God. Listen, uh, let's uh, go to this question here. Tell us and our viewers uh, your uh, experience growing up and how did you get to the point where you became an artist, your, your journey? Um, well, I've, I've all, as long as I can remember, I've, I've always enjoyed doing art, loved doing art. And uh, I remember uh, the house I grew up in with my parents, uh, my, my parents in the basement, they wouldn't let me loose upstairs, but in the basement, it was an unfinished basement. Uh, you know, cement floors. They didn't. They didn't mind. You know, giving me my finger paints. I had my little smock, and I would just go to town. Uh, and but I've always loved doing art. Uh, it was in the fourth grade where I guess um, I, I I just felt art art's calling on uh, on me. You know, you hear some artists sometimes say that I didn't choose art. Art chose me. So I, I guess uh, in the fourth grade was when I received that 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 call. Uh, I was one of those students who would be when it was days were, when it was when time to go to art class, I'll be the first in line. And I'm, I'm pretty sure I was the last in line when it was time to leave art class. And um, my art teacher at the time, uh, Ju Judy Matowski, I remember her name. And to this day, I wish I could find her because I, it was truly her uh, uh, leadership and, and her teaching and encouragement that really started me on my art journey. Uh, she had a after school class, which she called the Artist Guild. Now mind you, and th this was a, like a, a, a special class for artists that, or students that she saw had merit or potential uh, in you know, doing something more with the art and you know, really had more of a desire than just doing it for a grade or just doing it for, for class. And in this group, even it was the Artist Guild, but it was only two of us in, in the class. <laughs> but um, after school, she would give us extra projects to work on and we really enjoyed that. And um, she had a, a another uh, teacher friend, it was my English teacher, Miss Matana. Miss Matana's family had a farm. 
uh, and I forget what part of Maryland it was located in. And uh, they would take us there uh, on weekends and let us draw, you know, uh, from their their horses, you know, to to, to draw them. And uh, through Miss Matowski, I was also introduced into uh, various local uh, programs in Baltimore. Uh, uh, back then, they don't have them as much today, uh, but back then they had uh, art uh, programs and uh, recreational art programs at our like local library branches. Uh, they had uh, Saturday uh, art curriculum at uh, local uh, schools. And uh, Ms. Matowski uh, and her people introduced me to, to all of those. And, uh, uh, and, and where I'm going with this, it was uh, kind of like a, a string of events that eventually led me to uh, high school at the Baltimore School for the Arts. And uh, it was really nice to be able to go to uh, high school uh, on a daily basis and be exposed to um, a, a significant amount of art study. Uh, uh, at a high school level, but it was at, at, at a, at, while I was in, I guess while I was in high school, but really it was art that was kind of on a, a college level, uh, the uh, amount of uh, art curriculum that we were exposed to. And uh, from uh, Baltimore School for the Arts, I went on to the Maryland Institute College of Art and where I graduated with a, a BFA in visual communication and uh, uh, illustration. And uh, that kind of, uh, studying illustration um, helped to, I guess, develop the, the style of art that I, that I do today. Um, and from working at, uh, well, after Maryland Institute College of Art, um, I went on to uh, do freelance artwork. And uh, I sent my work off to various magazine uh, uh, public publishers, uh, greeting card companies, and I did freelance uh, for a while. Uh, but then uh, after that, I got an opportunity to work with a local artist uh, who uh, I no longer work with him. I work with him, I guess you could say now. He's a, a mentor of mine, uh, Larry Poncho Brown. Uh, and uh, and I, I guess I, I model what I do today kind of after what, what he does. I, I sell my drawings, paintings, uh, uh, reproductions of my work, as well as uh, uh, other art items as well. Wow, that is, I tell you what. The, your journey, you, it seems like the providence of the Lord, the providence of God, had it in such a way where you was growing up and the things were in place for you. He yes. put you around the people that would nurture your talent. And I tell you, that's amazing how God has a plan for all of our lives. Yes. That his plan will come to pass. He will be glorified. And uh, I am so blessed that you had an art teacher that was that trusted and believed in you and saw your talent and went out her way to develop the artist guild with just only two artists, you know. And that tells mm -hmm. us that um, we shouldn't despise small things and small beginnings because look, look what God has got you, brought you where you are now today. And you are a very... A very gifted and talented artists your work i i've been inspired when you show those quick videos of you uh drawing your uh doing your drawings and 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 uh i tell you what i thank you my art friend i thank you so much james for taking the time out to share with my audience and with me myself about your um your journey as an artist let's we're going to move on i got a, another question i want to ask you um let me see, let me get it together here. Um, yeah, that's what I want to ask you. I noticed that a lot you, when you have your videos on social media, and I think you may do it on Instagram. And for those of you all watching, we're going to, I'm going to have him allow him to share how he, you can contact him on the various platforms out there and on social media. But as for now, um, tell us, and tell me, based on what my audience may go back and see for themselves, you have some time-lapse videos, several time-lapse video of you going into people's homes and you are installing various pieces of art. And by the way, tell us what's going on with that. And also, is that your art or is that the art or artwork of other artists? Oh, okay. <clears throat> 
but uh, as I mentioned, um, I currently have a, a, a day job um, and the, the, my day job, I work for a, a gallery, an art gallery locally here in Baltimore. And what I do for them, uh, sometimes feel like, what well, don't I do for them? You know, wear a lot of hats, uh, but my, my main uh, responsibility is art installation. And uh, I, I install artwork, I hang artwork. And uh, I've, I've been with them for some years now. And uh, you know, a couple of years ago, I, I started to think, well, you know, well, and, well wait a minute. You know, I hang artwork for them. You know, I could probably do this. You know, I can offer this service, you know, my, myself. And, uh, you know, surprisingly, you know, uh, there's a lot of folks that need artwork installed in their homes or in their offices. And, uh, you know, that, and there's, there's a proper way to do it, you know, without uh, 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 having a, a lot of hole, unnecessary holes in your wall. And so, th though, the, uh, so these are the videos that uh, D is, is uh, re referring to. Um, I started doing uh, photos of my art installs and also a uh, video of my art install just to let, let people see what I do. And, and to also encourage them, you know, folks to contact me if, if they need help in installing, you know, artwork in their homes. Um, now to your, your question, D, is the artwork my own? Uh, but mo most times it, it isn't. It's, it's artwork that belongs to uh, the resident that you see me in. Um, uh, uh, so uh, they, they contact me to come to their home or to their office to uh, install the artwork uh, that, that, that they have. All right, thank you. Now with the little time we're about to have, let's go through some of the beautiful uh, artwork that you have created through the years and Oh, and uh, share. let's just share with the audience and just let you have it and you uh, discuss your artwork with us. The file is open. So uh, we got the woman with the roses, head of roses. What What's going on with that? Okay, and I can tell you, and, and let me say real quick, my, my artist statement, and this is what all my work is based on. My artist statement is, um, I'm a husband and a father. I'm a man of faith as well as a man of color. And it's these various aspects that I attempt to share and express in my artwork. So uh, uh, what I just said is, is kind of just weaved throughout everything that I do. So this particular piece is called Bantu Roses. And um, it was just, a, a, I, I love doing hair. It, it, as you can see from my head, I, I can't grow it, <laughs> but I love, I love, you'll see with my artwork, uh, the, the different hairstyles and, and I, I love drawing hair. So this was just a, a, a play off of an a, a African hairstyle. Uh, the, the, the hairstyle was Bantu knots, but in this case, I replaced the knots with roses. It was just a, a, an experiment uh, to see what it would look like. And I was pleased with the result. The, uh, it's a mixed media piece. It's a, pen and ink on toned paper and a uh, white acrylic. Okay, good. All right, and uh, let's go. I think we got time for one more. Go ahead. Okay, that one is called I Am Because You Are. And uh, that piece, it, it was, uh, the original was done in a graphite pencil. And it, that, that was also an experiment for me. And believe it or not, that, that piece took me about six months to complete because uh you, you look at my work my, the majority of my work is figurative I, I don't i haven't done very much abstract and to combine the faces gave that piece an abstract element that i had never attempted to do before and uh figuring out what would be connected to what where would his nose be connected as far as to her face or where her eye how would that relate to his eye you know, would, would their foreheads be this, the same distance? And so um, when I was working on that, I noticed that um, over the period of time that I was working, I noticed that I started having these headaches and I did not know what it was from. And so it was one evening I was working on a drawing and I'm sitting back and I'm looking at it and I'm trying to decide what to do next as far as connecting, interconnecting the figures. And it, it, I, I, my head started hurting and I told my wife, you know, there, it, it, this drawing is, is giving me headaches, but that wasn't necessarily a, a, a bad thing. Um, because again, it, I hadn't attempted anything like this before, but uh, it, so I would work on it on and off. I would have to go away from it and come back to it. 
But the beauty of this piece, and I'm glad that I went ahead and finished it, is interdependency. Uh, they're so interconnected that neither one would exist without the, without the other. You, you can't erase her without erasing him uh, by, or vice versa. And if you look at their hands, where the hands are placed, they're drawing each other. And it, you'll see that they're, they're pen, neither of their pencils have erasers. Because, and, and also their drawing isn't complete. And the idea behind that is the picture only becomes complete as they live their lifetimes out together. Wow, wow. Wow, that that is powerful. That is powerful. Oh my goodness, that is rich in a lot of symbolism and a lot of meaning. Thank you yes. so much. We're gonna um, about to end on this uh, episode with a question I want to ask you, and then uh, we're gonna take it from there. We're gonna sign out. But um, now. As we are about to leave this uh, interview, what is it on your heart, briefly as possible, that you want to communicate to the audience of mine and whoever else may be uh, watching this video? Is there anything you want to uh, disclose or reveal to them that's on your heart? Something that they need to hear. Yes. Um, if, if God has placed in you a, a calling, uh, a, a purpose. It could be artwork, uh, being an artist. It could be a, a musician or wh wh whatever calling he has placed on you, then pursue that. Um, sometimes, uh, you know, the, the, your, your family or your friends, your coworkers, they, they may not, not understand the, the, the vision that he's given you. And I've heard it said that uh, when, when God gives you a calling, it's a specific call to you. It's not necessarily a conference call. That call is not meant for everybody. It's, it's meant for you. And um, so if he has placed a vision, a purpose, a calling within your heart and your spirit, then he will provide the tools. He will provide the, the people. He will provide the means for you to accomplish what he has called you to do. But also he'll do it at his time. And that, that things don't always come together as we anticipate or as we would picture it, but God has a way of bringing it together in his time. And, and I'll say this one, if I may, uh, for me, uh, I would have liked to, uh, have been further along than I am now, but uh, sometimes there are roadblocks uh, and, and sometimes uh, there are detours because God needs to sideline us to build into us those things and tools and, 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 and experiences that we need to carry out that purpose that he has called us in. So uh, wait on the Lord, uh, trust in him and, 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 and pursue that, that calling that he has given in your heart. And whether it's art, photography, sculpture, uh, uh, a trade, uh, whatever the skill that he has given you to do, there is somebody that needs that from you. And you were not picked by chance. You were picked by God on purpose to deliver and fulfill those needs of those who are waiting on what God has gifted you to do. Thank you. Thank you so much. And well said, very loaded question with a lot of uh, information that needed to be exposed to the people. Now, real quick and then briefly, final question. Tell us, me and all of those who are watching this uh, uh Art, artist Talk, Episode 3, where can they find your work and how can they get a hold of it? Sure. Uh, my website is uh, www, all one word, somethingforyoursoul.com. Again, www.somethingforyoursoul.com. On social media, uh, I have a couple of Instagram pages. You can, uh, on, on uh, Instagram, at somethingforyoursoul, or also on Instagram, at James E. Murphy Jr., 
And uh, on Facebook, uh, you can look up the art of James E. Murphy Jr. All right. Thank you so much. That ends episode three of Artist Talk here on D Weaver Art on YouTube. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you got something good out of it. Let me know what you think by leaving a comment. Also, don't forget to hit the like button. You can follow me on Instagram and Facebook at the letter D Weaver Art. Thank you so much. God bless you. See you next time.